Skyport is being sued for defamation and apparently running a virtual racketeering mob serve, something along those lines, very strange situation. It's actually pretty interesting because Upper Deck themselves have crapped the bed completely in this situation, in my opinion. This relates to a LeBron James 2003 exquisite patch auto rookie card. Very, very expensive card. Very interesting situation. It involves Ken Golden as well. So let's go through the facts of the situation and then I'll share my thoughts in a second. Now, this came to light following this Yahoo Entertainment post um, earlier today with regards to Alan Spiegel and Steven Spiegel. I believe they are um, two brothers. They own this card in question that um, they're apparently upset with Cardboard about for essentially cock blocking their deal. Now, to give you some context, it's this rookie card in question. This posted up and been around the internet for many, many years. I think we spoke about this on the channel back in 2021 when essentially the card on the right showed up on Ken Golden's uh, auction. People like Wax Museum Podcast said, guys, something's weird with this card. I think it's been patch swapped. Card porn then caught on to it and made a few posts and essentially went to Upper Deck and said, guys, what the heck is going on? Now, they're both numbered 44 out of 99. They're both the same card. So the earliest image that this photo was taken as Cardport explained in their post is October 17, 2005. And what happens with a lot of these high-end rookie cards is that people will make databases for them, right? They want to track them, number one, to try and see what all the different patches look like, but number two, try and track to see whether anyone is doing anything dodgy with regards to patch swaps because it happens so freaking often. So people have this one on the left in their tracker, single colored piece of game used jersey. And then all of a sudden, many years later, they see the same card, same number, 44 out of 99, show up and it's got a patch now. It's got a patch piece of the patch jersey. Now, this was very interesting because when the card showed up on Golden's website, like I just showed and explained for auction, and I think it had a bit of upwards of $600,000 before Golden took it off, was that Golden said to card porn, you know what, guys, we think this is legit because we have a letter from Upper Deck saying it's legit. Now, this is the letter in question from Upper Deck that basically says that original card with the single color white patch, as you can see over here, was damaged. The customer said it had factory damage. They brought it to us. We destroyed it and gave them a replacement, right? And it just so happens that the replacement patch looked a crap ton better. Now, this is very interesting for a few reasons, because what people like Wax Museum Podcast and Card Porn then did was they did the comparison of the two cards, and they noticed that there was a lot of similarities between the two. There's chipping on the card that looks very, very similar. They do some things with regards to overlays, as you're about to see in this video now, where they basically overlay the two cards, and they say, you know what, the auto is exactly the same, the printing is exactly the same, a lot of things are exactly the same. So they took all this information, went back to Upper Deck, and Upper Deck said, holy crap, you guys are right, we didn't destroy this card, what the heck is going on? From there, Upper Deck reached out to Ken Golden, Ken Golden pulled the card off his website. Now, this is where things get interesting, and this is where the lawsuit comes into play, because the brothers are alleging that card porn did something untoward here to try and manipulate the market, to try and get the card you know, taken down to try and line their own pockets, right? They want to you know, run their own racketeering service to try and make sure that their own cards do really, really well, and they want to try and impact other sellers trying to sell their cards. This is what the brothers are alleging. But this is a very interesting situation because you would think based on all the photos that Cardboard have, based on all the photos that Wax Museum Podcast have, based on all the information that Upper Deck now have and have retracted that you know, letter they gave out, you would think those things pretty much give comfort to Carpool and they've done nothing wrong here. Like Upper Deck are not going to put out a letter like this in the first place, if I go back over here, and then retract it if they weren't 100% confident. And some of you might say, well, what the heck is going on here? Like, wouldn't they have done the same thing when they wrote the letter in the first place? But this is just very, very strange. Like the biggest question here, in my opinion, is how did this letter get written in the first place? It's once again a card company absolutely shitting the bed when it comes to having you know an appropriate risk appetite this card is worth over a million dollars and upper deck are going to let a customer which it looks like allegedly coerce them into writing a letter like this to say they destroyed a card that they never in fact destroyed or got back in their hands like what's going on it's just a very strange situation from them and i find it odd that the brothers are angry at card porn for that but not at upper deck for going back on the word that they gave in their letter like, I think the photos by Card Porn and Wax Museum Podcast speak for themselves. And I know a lot of people want to shit on Card Porn lately, but, you know, they made these posts back in 2021 when they were the OG Card Porn and calling people out left, right, and center. This is the Card Porn that we all know and love, right? And they've done it again in this post when it showed up again for sale in the last couple of days. It's just a very interesting situation. And what, you know, was even more interesting is it looks like these brothers are 
trying to cash in on this sentiment that I've sort of created with some of my posts and then AIH Sports have sort of created and people like Sports K Radio have also talked about with regards to card porn changing and, and stepping away from their old approach and now are apparently in cahoots with some of these people like Ken Gold and so on and so forth. Like whether that's true or not is irrelevant in my opinion. As I've always said, card porn can sort of post whatever they want. You're not a bad dude for questioning. You've, you've seen now that Cardboard have put a, a big auction up with Ken Golden in terms of some of their autograph memorabilia. Maybe they're friends now, which is why they go easy on some people within the hobby. But that doesn't change the fact that this card doesn't look like it was a replacement card. It looks like the card was actually patch swapped. It's just a very, very odd situation that these guys are now trying to cash in on that mentality of people hating on Cardboard because they think they've got something they can run with. And I had somebody actually a month or so ago, tell me that somebody was trying very, very hard to find out who the owner of Card Porn was. You know, I know who the owner of Card Porn is. Um, it's not actually that hard to figure out. If your lawyers were very competent, you could have figured it out inside, you know, a good 15, 20 minute email to a certain social media platform. It's actually not that hard. Now, I'm not going to dox them on here, even though I've made videos about trying to identify who the owner was in the past. It's different if it's a conglomerate. I think it's owned by an individual now. I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to get them in trouble with regards to this. But again, I feel like this is a bit of smoke and mirrors, this, this lawsuit, because like I just said, if they really wanted to find out who the owner was, because they basically talk about somewhere in here, they can't serve their cease and desist because they don't actually know who owns the account. It's anonymized. Like, guys, if you really wanted to find out who the owner was, you would uh, get in touch with them. And what's interesting with this is if they actually wanted to go to court, I think they would have by now. And... The reason why I don't think they would want to go to court, because whilst they're talking about, you know, prior false and defamatory posts by card porn, it's not going to be a can of worms that you want to open to understand how this letter got created by Upper Deck in the first place. If these guys are the ones that owned it in the first place and they had Upper Deck, you know, write this letter, what does that mean? What kind of dialogue did they have between them and Upper Deck that I'd imagine Upper Deck would still have on file somewhere on some server on some freaking internet account? Is that something you want to come to the public lives? Is that something you want to get entered into the courtroom? I don't know. And I'm not saying these brothers have done anything guilty themselves, right? Or that the prior owner did anything guilty themselves. It's just, it's just an odd situation. And like I just said, I think if they wanted to figure out who owned the account, um, they'd know about it by now. So all in all, I think it's a, a pretty interesting situation. I don't think I don't think Kai Bond's going to get sued. I just find the article pretty funny, to be honest, because there's a quote in there that I'll see if I can find now and that I'll bring it back up on screen, where they, they say basically they also believe that card porn has been able to create a virtual racketeering ring in the collectibles industry where sellers and professionals are terrified of earning the ire of card porn, which basically they're saying that allows card porn to then manipulate the market. Now, that's probably true in the sense that card porn now have a big enough following where they can hurt individuals which is why when it comes to back to being a watchdog, you sort of need to be balanced with your views. You can't just be focusing in on people like, you know, some of these greatest, as Cardboard have done, right? And this is where they've copped some hate because it's been like, oh, you're just hating on HGA. You're just hating on SGC. Why don't you give PSA some hate lately? Or you're going after Probstein for some of these, you know, shield bidding accusations. Why aren't you going after Ken Golden for some of his, you know, weird concerns around some of how he how he handles some of his auction auctions, right? And that's where you can sort of give some grievance toward Cardborn, but that's where you need to be careful. But to say Cardborn is intentionally doing that, I don't know. It's a pretty interesting situation, in my opinion, like I just said. I feel like I just spoke in a circle, lost my train of thought, but all in all, I just found that, you know, very, very interesting. I just cannot believe that Upper Deck wrote that letter, right? How did Upper Deck get to the point where they could comfortably state that that card was genuine and that they, in fact, received it back from the customer, destroyed it, and then also replaced it um, if they weren't 100% certain. And maybe, you know, Upper Deck were correct in writing that letter in the first place. Maybe these brothers are telling the truth, but it's just odd that you see the replacement card have the same sort of signature, like identical signature, right? Same damage to the chipping on the sides of the card, so on and so forth. Like, what's going on? Did Upper Deck replace the patch themselves? Who knows? Did somebody out at Upper Deck do something dodgy here? Who knows? Did somebody out at Upper Deck you know, take something to line their pockets to do something for a friend. Who knows? Those are the questions you kind of want answered in this situation, to be honest. And because the answers to those questions are, are so severe in the sense that if some of those accusations turn out to be true, somebody could lend in jail, right? Because it's fraud. Those are the reasons why this will never see, you know, the, the inside of a courtroom, in my opinion. So please share your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I just spoke for 10 minutes. I do apologize. 
apologize if I forgot anything in terms of the specifics of this case. It's just, again, a very interesting situation. And, and like I said, Upper Deck wouldn't get to the point where they felt the need to pull this auction um, if they didn't think the evidence that Card Porn and Wax Museum podcast produced was complete and accurate and authentic and so on and so forth. It's a very interesting situation. I keep saying that. I'll put a link down to the article down below if you haven't seen it. It's on Yahoo Entertainment. It's not that hard to find, actually. I'll put a link to Card Porn's post down below as well. They're being sued, but it doesn't look like they're being sued for anything that's legitimate, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I'm not stating anything as fact. So please don't sue me. I'm just a poor little fat dude from Australia. It is what it is. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my weekly news video tomorrow. This is a bonus video for this week, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.